Hey guys, this week for Weapons Wednesday, we're going to really test out some of the different self-defense keychains we carry at KarateMart.com and let you know what's actually good about them and what's bad about them. But before we begin, if you could just like this video and subscribe to our channel, that would be awesome. Okay, so one thing I want to mention before I start showing you any of these things is that you really need to check your local laws before carrying anything because different states, different cities, they have different laws regarding what you can carry, what you can sell. So just make sure you check your local laws before carrying any of these things. So one of the questions we get asked all the time is what would be the best self-defense weapon for me to carry if I'm traveling to a dangerous area? And that's a really good question to ask, but it also means that we need to know a little bit more about your background. If you're brand new to the martial arts, if you've never had any self-defense training before, I really suggest that you consider getting some pepper spray, which is the very first keychain I'd like to show. So this specific pepper spray is our UV dye pepper spray. And uh, what I like about it is that it's small, actually could fit on a keychain really nicely but also it has that UV identifying dye to it to where if you spray someone with it it actually leaves a clear UV dye coating on the person's face or body that can only be seen by a black light or a UV light um, which is really important for police to try to figure out who you actually sprayed so I would definitely recommend getting a UV dye pepper spray if you're going to get a pepper spray. Um, but pepper spray is awesome because it allows you to keep some distance between you and your attacker. And um, it's, it's a really easy self-defense weapon to learn and to use. But most of the people watching this video have probably never actually seen pepper spray being sprayed. So I actually wanted to take this outside and test it out a little bit. Actually spray something to see what kind of stream comes from the can so we can get an idea of how effective it'll actually be. So let's go outside and actually test this out. Okay, so to test out this pepper spray, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by putting on some safety glasses so that it doesn't blow back into my face. And the way it works, is we actually move over the safety switch and just spray. And I'm just gonna spray this box that we had in the building just so that we can see the stream and how strong it is. So I'm gonna have my camera person move back just a little bit. Okay, so as you can see from the video, the pepper spray actually had a nice, solid, steady stream from about eight feet away that left this orange residue on the target. And that orange residue is actually what's going to show up with a UV light down the road when a police officer needs to figure out who you sprayed. So I really like this pepper spray. I think this is a good one. Uh, this is a UV dye pepper spray that we sell on KarateMart.com. Okay, so the next item I want to show off is the personal alarm stun gun. And we just released a video of this item last week on YouTube. And uh, I wanted to show it off again a little bit because I really like it. The video on YouTube has more of an explanation of how it works. So we're not going to go into all those details. But the thing I really like about it is that it has the ability to do a really high pitched alarm as well as has a nice LED light that could be useful when you're out at night. Um, but my concern with these, as always, is how strong are they really when it comes to being a stun gun? So I'm gonna have my assistant test it out on me really quick, and let's just, uh, let's just see how strong it actually is. Ah, jeez. It's, uh... <laughs> It's definitely painful. Um, it feels like someone grabs your skin and kind of twists really hard. I'm not sure how good it would be for actually defending yourself against someone attacking you. So that is my biggest concern because it is a small stun gun and it doesn't have a lot of amperage to it. Um, so I can see it being very painful if you hit someone on the neck or in the groin, um, but I just don't know how well that could defend you. So if you're gonna carry something like this, definitely take some self-defense lessons, learn some different techniques you can use to defend yourself. Um, but as far as this goes, what I really like about it, as I said, is that alarm and then the flashlight. So it's definitely 
a really cool little stun gun to have. All right, so the next items I wanted to show off for our self-defense keychains are the cat spike keychains. Now we have two different versions here. We've got the cat spike keychain, which is this guy, and that is made out of a steel. And it's pretty cool. Like it looks like it would have a kind of sharp spikes at the end. Uh, but we also have this, and this is the cat self-defense key ring. And uh, this is made out of some sort of polypropylene or nylon, um, which seems pretty strong too. Um, so it's not metal, but it does have the metal key ring. Okay, so let's look at the advantages and disadvantages to each of these. Let's start with the cat spike keychain. So I would say that the biggest advantage to this would be that it's steel and it's very strong. Another advantage to it is that it is extremely thin and would fit in your pocket nicely. So I like that in that respect. Now the problem with this is that the holes here are too small for my knuckles. So I actually can't fit it all the way up my hand. But I can hold it like this and it actually gives me a pretty nice grip if I was to use self-defense attacks. So I, uh, it doesn't bother me that much that the holes are that small. Now the advantage to this is that the holes are a lot larger so I can actually hold it all the way onto my fist and that gives me a good ability to strike someone with it. Um, the disadvantage is that it's a little more bulky. It's actually going to puff up in my pocket a little bit more because it's not quite as thin um, and it appears to be made out of some sort of polypropylene plastic nylon um, which is very strong, but I think we need to actually test both of these out to see how strong they actually are. So let's take these over to the other room and actually test them out a little bit. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to test both of these key rings out on is a watermelon. And I know you're asking yourself, why does Kyle bring a watermelon into every one of his videos? The truth of the matter is, they're actually really cheap right now in Phoenix. They're about $3 each at the store. Plus, they actually give a pretty good visual to what the weapon's able to do. So let's start out with the cat spike key ring and see how that does, just to see how sharp it is. So I'm not going to hit it as hard as I can, but I just want to see how easily it enters into the watermelon. As you can see, I had to strike with it in that other grip, but it actually did really nicely. It cut into that really, really well. So now let's test the other one out, which I can hold a little bit better. Okay, so you can see that I actually cracked the watermelon, and I think that's because part of my fist actually hit at that time. Um, but I also want to test these out on the Wing Chun dummy just to see if they can manage to hit something that's that hard and not damage themselves, especially this plastic one. All right, so now we're going to test these out on the Wing Chun dummy. And I'm going to strike right on this softer portion just to see if they'll stick in um, and if they are strong enough to actually manage hitting something that dense. I'm a little concerned about this guy, though, because I am holding it in this weird angle and I'm worried that I'm going to hurt my hand by doing that. So I'm not going to strike as hard as I can. I'm just going to strike it hard enough to see if it actually can, can do some damage. Okay, so it, it can, you can see it's made little dents into it. It definitely can withstand some pretty good impact. That steel's not going to bend or anything, um, but I'm going to be honest, that actually kind of hurt my hand. Like you can see against my fingers there, it was kind of hitting, and then it was hitting the inner part. Um, as far as comfort goes, that wasn't the most comfortable self-defense keychain. I could see this being better for someone with smaller fingers. Uh, I just have larger hands, and I think that uh, I think it's going to be an issue for me. So let's try out the other one and see how that one does. Okay, so the cat self-defense keychain has those larger eye holes, so it uh, can actually go up my fist really nicely. So let's, uh, let's test this one out. I feel a little more comfortable giving a little bit stronger punch to this, and that way we'll be able to test out to see if this will break or not. So let's go ahead and give that a try. Okay, so I was actually striking that pretty hard, and it didn't seem to damage the weapon at all. It actually seems pretty good. Um, my hand hurts a little bit around the fingers. Um, it wasn't 
perfectly comfortable, but definitely more comfortable than the other one. And I was striking that fairly hard, and uh, I know that that would definitely be an effective tool against an attacker. But the truth of the matter is that a weapon is only as effective as the person using it. So if you're going to carry something like this, definitely take some self-defense classes to make sure that you can protect yourself properly. All right, so the next self-defense keychain I wanted to show off is the monkey fist keychain. Now, these are actually very misunderstood. Um, they actually have kind of a bad rap to them because so many people just don't understand how they work. So a monkey fist keychain was originally something that uh, sailors developed. Uh, they would use them as like a steel weight when casting their nets or casting their fishing lines. And um, they eventually became a self-defense weapon. But uh, what they're kind of known for is not just a striking self-defense weapon, but also something to actually kind of work on your dexterity. Like what, what a lot of people will do is they'll just sit here and just swing them around their wrists and kind of build up the wrist muscles and work on their dexterity. And they're actually very good for that. But as a self-defense weapon, what a lot of people like to do is they like to hook their keys to the keychain and either kind of leave it hanging out of your pocket like that. So if you're attacked, you can pull it out and just whip the steel ball into someone. Or they keep it like this and they whip out their keys and actually strike with their keys. So if you've got a lot of keys on your key ring, that could be a very effective weapon. So this is one of those things where you'd want to actually really learn how to use it properly if you're going to use it, um, but it can be a very effective weapon. So I wanted to test this out and actually see how strong it is. So let's go ahead and do that uh, against the watermelon first. Okay, so for the monkey fist keychain, I want to see how quickly I can yank this out and actually strike something with it, just to see if it's effective as a fast-paced weapon. So let's give that a whirl. Okay, so if you look at it, come around here, this is what the monkey fist did to it. You can see where it struck, and it actually completely destroyed this watermelon. So I think that this steel ball would actually be a pretty effective weapon. So uh, I'm kind of into these monkey fists. Let's check another weapon out. All right, so the next item I want to show off is the push dagger keychain. So if we look at it, it's pretty small. I guess that's a, a benefit and kind of a problem at the same time. The benefit to that would be that it would fit nicely in your pocket if you have keys on it. But uh, the problem with it is that that's kind of small. So let's take a look at this. If I actually use it like a push dagger, that leaves probably only about an inch of blade coming out of my hand, which, I mean, that's plenty of blade, to be completely honest, but that's a little small for a push dagger. It actually does feel really comfortable, though, but uh, let's go try it out on a couple of things. All right, so if we look at this push dagger keychain, it's obvious that it's going to go into a watermelon just fine. So, I mean, really, there's no point to me even showing that off. But what we need to check is to see if this blade is strong enough to actually go into the Wing Chun dummy without bending. So let's go and test that out. Okay, so this thing is fairly comfortable. I have a couple of concerns, though. I mean, if I hold it really tightly, there's no way that's going to cause any issues. But if I were to let loose and my fingers hit that just right and maybe even, like, spread apart, I could see my fingers going up and hitting that blade. So... With this thing, I'd want to be extremely careful. I'd want to keep my hands strictly very tight around the handle. But let's go ahead and test to see if the blade is strong enough to withstand the Wing Chun dummy. Yeah, it actually uh, sticks in there pretty nicely. So I'm not worried about that weapon at all. It actually seems like a, a pretty decent keychain weapon. So let's test out some other things. Okay, so the next item I'm going to show off is the Shark Key Self-Defense Keychain. And there's some things I like about this and some things that I don't. First off, it's made out of some sort of nylon or acetyl or polypropylene, but it feels like it's really good quality. It's extremely comfortable, too. Like, that fits in my hand really nicely. I could see people with big hands 
it being very comfortable in. And then it's got this fin on it that's actually kind of sharp. And you can tell that it's really strong, just the way that they made that. You could tell that that could withstand a strike really well. And I also like how you can put your thumb on the tail and actually get some good force into that tail. So I think this would be a very effective weapon. Now the thing I don't like about it is it's really bulky. Like I have a feeling that probably wouldn't fit very nicely in your pocket. And if you dug your hand in really quick, you could actually hit your hand on that tail or hit your hand on the fin. So I guess if I was going to carry this, I would probably, like, I could see it fitting nicely in a purse um, or just next to you in a car. But I'm not sure about fitting in your pocket. It just seems a little bit bulky for that. Um, but I do really want to test this out because I have a feeling it's going to be a very powerful weapon. So let's go ahead and test it out. All right, so we're going to start with the watermelon. And what I like about this is my hand feels extremely comfortable. So I feel fine giving it a really good solid punch. So let's go ahead and just test it out on the watermelon. So you can see the fin went right in there and it kind of cracked it along there. And that feels pretty good. Like I can get a nice punch on that. And then let's also test out the tail. So yeah, that uh, took a nice chunk out of that too. So uh, now I want to test it out on the Wing Chun dummy and see if uh, it can actually withstand that. Okay, so I'm actually going to strike this pretty hard, but I don't expect it to actually stick because that's actually a fairly thick fin there. So I think it's going to be very effective, but I don't think it's going to be like the push dagger where it actually stuck into it. So let's, let's try it. Okay, so it didn't damage the fin at all. It actually looks in great shape. And it definitely did some damage to Wing Chun Dummy, but as I suspected, it didn't stick into the Wing Chun Dummy. So I think this would actually be a really good weapon if you can get past the fact that it's that bulky. It's comfortable. Um, it seems like it's really well made. I like it. So let's test out something else. All right, so the next self-defense keychain I'm going to show off is the Ribbed Grip Kubaton keychain. Now, these actually get a pretty bad rap because there's a lot of people that don't understand them. There's a lot of people that uh, just think, hey, how do you defend yourself with something that's strictly for pressure points or for joint manipulations? But uh, the fact of the matter is, I've seen some martial artists who are incredible with these, who can use them to take down an attacker like nothing, use it for a joint manipulation. They can actually be a very effective tool. That being said, for someone who isn't trained in Kubaton, this is going to be pretty much worthless. So if you're new to the martial arts, if you haven't trained in Kubatons, I wouldn't recommend this as a self-defense keychain for you. But there are some effective uses to them. For one, you can hook your keys to the end of it, and you can yank it out of your pocket and use that as a handle and whip someone in the face with your keys. So that can be very effective. Uh, for two, you know, they actually do have a pretty good point there that you can use if you know how to use it correctly. But for those of you who uh, like Kubatons but would like a little bit more usability to it, we also carry the Kubaton knife. And this is kind of cool too. Like it would have the same use as you could add your keys to it, pull it out of your pocket, use it as a handle to strike with your keys, but it also gives you the ability to convert it into a pretty nice knife. So that blade is actually pretty long and it's got a very sharp tip to it. The blade itself isn't overly sharp, um, but I have a feeling that would do quite a bit of damage if you needed it to. Um, so you notice the disadvantage to this would be that it took a little while for me to unscrew it and screw it back in. And I understand if you're being attacked, that is not something you can actually do. You don't have time to put a knife like this together. But at the same time, if you notice that there's someone following you from across the street and you have time to take this out and actually turn it into a knife, I would take something like this over my bare fists any day. So it can be an effective weapon if you have enough time to put it together. But let's go ahead and test both of these out and just see how, how strong and effective they are.
All right, so I attached the ribbed grip Kubaton to my keys. So now I actually have a pretty good handle if I were to use my keys as a weapon. So if I were to use these, I'd probably leave it out of my pocket just a little bit. And if I was attacked, I'd yank it out and aim for the eyes and then come back with a hammer strike. And as you can see, that just dug right into the watermelon and uh, you know left a pretty big crack along it too. So this can actually be a very effective weapon if used properly, but again, you'd need to be trained correctly in how to use this weapon if you're ever gonna carry it. But let's test out the one with the knife in it now. Okay, so with the hidden knife Kubaton, you could actually do exactly the same thing. You could hook your keys to it, use it as a handle, strike with it exactly the same way. But what I'm concerned about with this is how strong the knife is. So let's go ahead and test this knife out on the Wing Chun dummy because we all know this is going to be fine sticking into a watermelon. Okay, so what I want to see is how strong this blade actually is. The blade itself is made out of stainless steel, which is a very strong metal. But I'm just slightly concerned that where it attaches to the body, it's not going to actually be strong enough to withstand a good strike into something solid like this. So I'm going to actually strike it pretty hard and see if it can withstand it. Yeah, doesn't seem to have any issue at all with, uh, with the blade being weak or I'm not seeing any sort of bending to the tip of that. It's actually a pretty strong blade, so um, I'm actually impressed with this. But uh, if you have any questions on any of the items that I showed in this video, definitely leave them in the comments below. Make sure you check out KarateMar.com to see all of the different self-defense keychains that we carry. Until next week, we'll see you Weapons Wednesday.